just like to acknowledge the original title holders of the Wurundjeri and the Benarong peoples. Thank you for joining us today and we in the deployment zone are going to be on the high seas in the game known as Sails of Glory. Sails of Glory is a game set in the Age of Sail from about the early mid 1700s to the mid, early mid-ish but generally early 1800s. Most of it is related around the Napoleonic sail period and so there's a, a large amount of fleets available for the uh, British fleets and the French fleets but there is also some of the American fleets as well available that you can get from the expansion packs that allow for constitution and so on and a few of the ships that they had for the a War of Independence, as well as the ships that the Americans gave to the British, or gave to the French, sorry, against the British, as, as well as the 1812 war. So, we've got uh, Spanish as well, I think. They've got, uh, they're opening up different lines of the ships, which is all pretty amazing. And we'll have a look at some of the models in a few moments, and we'll have a look at everything. But the base of Sails of Glory is revolving around the Napoleonics and you get uh, some French and British ships that you then can do some initial practice scenarios with. We'll cover a little bit about the game and we'll go through some of the gameplay and look at some of the cards and so on. This is a game with lots of little cardboard bits so you need lots of bags a lot of little baggies to put things in. You also need a couple of um, uh, black like uh, pouches as well, which you can get elsewhere. So, the game is obviously set in the high seas, but you can play it in one of two ways. It's ideally an historic war game, where you set up a scenario between this ship versus that ship, or this action versus that action. But it does have a little bit of a miniature war game element to it with the points available. There's a, a brief template for some points. But ideally the game itself is designed for um, working out the uh, an historical context. So if you want to do the Battle of Trafalgar or if you wanted to do something else that's, you know, just that you know the names of the ships, you can actually source most of the ships. Most of the ships in here Are as little expansion packs that come with their movement cards, they come with the little uh, miniature that's pre painted. So there's no point in stripping it down and repainting it, and it's just pretty much just a ship. Most of the time, with these older lines of ships, they were a family or a class of fam or a class of ship. So you had the Constitution class, which may have had you know a number of ships built in that exact style. So in theory, you could get three or four of the same ships. But from an historical point of view, you, that's not how games were run, you know, so that's not how wars were fought or, or they were on the, the water. But through here you, you can create a little bit more customization on how you want to develop. This could be more like a, a, a very much an historical game where you just sort of arrange with your partner or with your opposition what you're bringing to the table and how it should feel. So it's like, yep, we're putting HMS Victory on the, the battlefield. Okay, well, let's see how it runs versus these three uh, frigates from the French line. That sort of thing. You can play a few what-ifs, but for the most part, it's just ships on a field and go for it. Uh, you can create little areas of uh, where you've got shoals and uh, there are a number of different expansion packs. So whilst on a ship, you've got no, you know, on a ship miniature game, there, there's no rough terrain or blocking terrain there's definitely enough to be able to play with and with this game it takes into account the weather uh, the wind direction obviously as well as the other conditions and you can put 
you know, you could do shore bombardment and so on. So there, there are a number of different options available to it. So what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at the uh, pieces and go through some of the basics. All right, so bear with me. Okay. So a ship is one of these. The case itself is just as a slip where you put the card underneath and you've got your firing points so that you can see the firing little circles for where you line up ship to ship combat and as you can imagine broadsides are more effective you also have a certain amount of ammunition that's available so you need to make sure that your shots are being used wisely so this is the HMS Terpeshaw the HMS Terpeshaw and we'll have a quick look at her cards. Every ship has one of these templates. So if you're playing with six ships, obviously you need six of them. You get a few with each set and you can get them as additional expansion packs. So Tepeshaw goes here, as thus. And so what we know from the card what we know from the card is the number of people, the number of guns, the maneuver capabilities. In this instance, we've got um, eight. And as you lose sail or gain winds and so on, it affects how well you maneuver as well as the environment. And then you've got your movement deck and your general size of your ship. So the Terpeshaw is an Amazon class frigate and a size two. So something else will be a size four, and it'll have more guns, more men, more, a different maneuverability deck. So on here, we have where we put our counters for various ammunition, how we've got our sail, anchored, full sails, battle sails, so on. How many manual actions we can do, and in what order, so you would place them down and then as the turns progress, move them up and you have where your movement cards go. This black space in the middle here is where you put, in effect, the card for the ship, where you've got, as damage is taken, the power of firearms, the number of actions that you can take with your crew and the riflemen aboard making shots. This is the wind gauge and this will direct what direction the wind is blowing and you also have the facility for how strong the winds are. Each player has one of these which tells us we line that up atop so from here we put the wind attitude token on the wind gauge and we're able to determine that the flat is pointing north. So when we measure that against a ship we know how, what direction the wind is coming at and then what type of manoeuvres can be performed by the ship which we'll get to in a few moments. There are a number of optional rules but at the as you take on a complexity of the game. But at the base level, you have your ship, and then you can choose to do two maneuvers. Which go there. Your each ship would make this as a an action choose what you're doing and you would also put here what you're doing for your crew and what type of sails you're running with. So in this instance the first action is this one. 
from here you can see that we have some colors along the edge of the board they represent green orange and red in case you can't see their color types and that tells us what type of actions we can perform based on the wind and so on so from here we always point the attitude to the main sail and because this is how we have the wind gauge we know that we're doing a green maneuver which is at full honest to goodness power place that down and you can see where you have the orange and a green so assuming that we're at full mast we move like that If the wind, if the wind gauge was pointing, say, in a more westerly, say like that, we have our ship. We always point to the mainsail. We're coming in on the orange, and assuming we've got this our full sails going still that's the longer that's this one here we would only go as far as the orange if we have a look at this maneuver card key points of information this five means you need to be able to perform a five maneuver. The Turpishaw starts with an eight, so at full health it's fine. As we mentioned before, if the wind is coming through at the orange, then the orange ship is as far as you can go. This first line is at full sail. The second one is for battle sails. And the third one is when the sails are mostly up or as up as they can go we're still getting some collecting some wind we line it up like that so if the front goes here the back goes there front is here we go there or there if it's on a green zone See there's a bit of a turn to straighten out, a bit of a tack, and different cards. So these are all considered normal maneuvers, but you also have damage sail maneuvers so when you start to get sail damage that's what this mass damage up here means when you start to have mass damage one mast two masts and the red when the ship is going the wrong way Movement is using these movement templates, which are a size of a card. Uh, the table size is three foot by three foot, which means that it's not as large a space as you would imagine. So the next question is what happens when there's another ship on the board? Firing at a ship is not compulsory, you don't have to. And to fire, we measure the distance from one of those little dots where we put the center of the aiming tool and as long as it go touches or gets onto the base of your opponent such as this and that's fine that's fine that's fine that's fine that is not you need to actually get 
the corner on the edge, which is fine. And at the firing end, the center of the marker is on the little dot representing what it can hit. Sometimes you can do it with the broadside, which means from here, but because of the nature of, well that's moved a bit, you can't always. So that's why it's so wonderful, you need to make sure you're within the, the firing arc of the ship. These numbers here tell us how many tokens are going to be pulled from the bag. So our fully health, full health Terpishaw, HMS Terpishaw, from the front firing arc is two, a broadside is four tokens, and from the aft is also two. On the range ruler, you have the first half of the ruler for being a B category, and the full length is an A. Shooting at long range, you're pulling some A counters from a bag, and at what's considered short range for the standard shot is pulling from the B. There are also other damage markers depending on what the ship has available. Grape shot, which takes out crew, and chains, which goes after the sails. Then there's also these ranges here, and this is for muskets. So the amount of counters, E for the muskets. So back to our example where we've got the Terpishaw firing at the Carajus. The Terpishaw able to make just the single shots from the one side and at the four, the four guns. Gets to pull two counters from the bag. So this is an add-on piece that you're able to pick up which is the Sails of Glory Napoleonic Wars counter bag and it's got a big A on it. Give it a shake and the Terpishaw pulls out two counters. First one doing zero and the second one doing zero. Here's some examples of some of the counters that you find in the A category. The flat numbers are the amount of damage that gets done and you move down the list for hull damage. And then you also have a crew token as well as specific damages to the ship that stop it from performing certain functions. A lucky shot could take out a rudder, forcing it to only be able to move in a certain direction or getting stuck in the last direction so on. There are certain rules on all of those as well as uh, flat out damage. Here's some of the B categories. They take out of do a bit more damage you're moving in closer and so on. So uh, the closer you get to your opponent if you're able to get a broadside so remember the broadsides are where you get to pull out the most tokens then you get to actually inflict truckloads of damage along the way. So over here is where we look at what we've got assigned for our ship. So at the moment we have our guns loaded, we have it set at full sails, and we have our actions defined over here. And what we would do is we fired on the left side. So the action is firing from the left, which we'd done. If we hadn't done that, then that just moves away 
and we don't do anything here. But if we do, which we then we need to have had that action loaded, and we move it down here to say that we've fired it. Second action, we're loading on the left, so that takes all of that and then once next turn because we've got that going we're able to move this back up here in time and but uh, you know so you can fire and then keep firing we've got an action suggesting that we're moving our sails from full sail down one and the last one is repairs so the re at the end when we're done we remove the actions that we don't need they return to the counters box this one stays there because now what we've got is we've got a delayed action which puts it here if we take fire or take to take damage and we need to repair I've got that preloaded in terms of something that we can do but now we only have three actions and Notice up here, as long as we've got full complements of crew, our actions fine and then suddenly they drop. There's also a musketry option if we're within musket fire range. And again, we have how many counters from the musket. Once a ship has taken damage, you just place it there and as you place as you take damage and if you take more obviously once you've taken a bit more damage so if somebody's inflicted three damage on us we put three counters out like that so now when the ship fires see how the firepower diminishes uh, the game is very good it has a lot of solid mechanics behind it. The bags of mystery, always better than rolling dice, but they do take a little bit of time to, to work out uh, how it's gonna work because people are used to just rolling dice. Um, just wanna roll a D6, hit on a four plus, damage on a six plus, whatever, whatever, whatever. But when you're pulling into the, the bag, you're limited by what's in the bag. So if you've got two craft of bees that use the, the same uh, you know taking shots you, you're drawing out some of those tokens you can get extra packs of tokens if you feel that you don't have enough but there are quite a few most ships have probably just a handful of hit points really if, if you were going to if we're going to use anything it'd be like i suppose whole points but uh, before they lose enough effectiveness that they just become floating targets so uh, and there are, of course, actions for boarding and combat and all of that. That all exists inside the advanced rules. Uh, but at the simplest level, we just roll around on the table. And you don't need to have um, a, a blue mat. You can just do it on the tabletop just like that. It's fine. A three foot by three foot is the uh, requirement. And uh, then, of course... It doesn't take too long to put together in terms of understanding the rules, but it does take a while in getting all the pieces together to set up for a game. Once you've got all of that done, then it can take about 40 minutes, 45 minutes for a game with one or two one or two ships aside. If you wanted to go with a larger battle, then obviously you need more of those um, cardboard cutouts, um, which are all available through the website at Ares. And uh, the occasional stockers. There aren't many stockists that keep any of the Sales of Glory kit. The game is, is quite complete. Uh, you get enough to, to run two ships in each, for each person. Uh, so a second pack might be required or have someone having their own pack might be required. And then you can uh, agree to how you want your forces made up. There is a, a document floating out there with some points on how the different ships are categorized uh, I think that's available off the Ares website as a downloadable option 
And if you wanted to just go a bit gonzo, you could have whatever ships on whatever sides, just put them together, it doesn't really matter. It's not like there's any special rules for a ship or what they can do. It's really effects for damage and for uh, understanding how they move across the board. So the weather gauge is obviously going to be a point of contention. Oh no, it needs to be angled in this shape instead of that shape. And if it's the the idea being that if it cr crosses two, so two colours, in other words, if it's line ball decision, it goes in the favour of the person whose ship it is. They're assuming that the person has the, the captain is making the best decision available based on the information at hand. So you, you can't really try and twitch it to be one or over the other. You're going to be able to, um, but that that's probably the the area of, of the most contention in the games that I've tested and and uh, had a few kick arounds with. Uh, all right, well, thank you so very much for today. I appreciate everyone's uh, viewing and. We'll be looking at a few other games coming up. And so today we are finished. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day.